So now let's talk about the upper control arm thrust bushings, right? We all know that the ones that come with the stock uh, thrust arms are just total dog shit and they need to be replaced. There's a number of different options, but I decided to use, and I'll show you when I get them, um, these are the, the moose head spherical bushings, right? These are the bushings that um, characterize the type of bushings for the rear that we were working on before. Um, they're in a housing, they're spherical, so they kind of turn, um, and they are really, really strong. These things break down over time, actually it doesn't take very much, um, and the reason that I'm, I'm spending the money on them and going for them now is because I've, I've got an E53 and an E46, and I suffer, both of those did suffer, um, like a bump uh, situation where the steering wheel moved whenever it hit a bump, and that's because those bushings moved a lot. They're very weak, and they need to be replaced. I like to upgrade them. I want to just do it for this car and just get out of the way because I know that they're going to be a problem, so let's just do that right now. Got a press right behind me. I'll show you how to work it. Two and a quarter inch tube or pipe, and then there's my plate. Now, it's just a matter of pressing it down. There it is. There's the bad bushing right there, and let's loosen this up. tube slides right out and I'm ready to install the Moosehead Engineering spherical bushings. All right, now let's talk about the next stage in the suspension front rear sus uh, suspension rebuild and that is cleaning. We did not buy every suspension component brand new. Just can't afford it. It's way too much money. But I did get most of the fronts brand new and I got a lot of rear bushings brand new with a couple of links as well. But everything is really dirty. Dirt caked on, a little bit of surface rust, and we just need to clean it. So what is the best way to do it? Well, you can use a wire wheel or what I prefer after trying this earlier today is the Harbor Freight um, bench top. This is like the cheapest uh, sandblaster you can get. Um, I got my vacuum hooked up to it already. There's tons of videos out there that show you how to do it and the reviews. My review on it uh, on initial try is actually it's really good. Um, if you seal it up well and you use the right media, um, it actually just works fine. The gloves are pretty crappy, but you know, I mean, you can definitely get a new pair of gloves uh, pretty easily. And the screen also uh, needs to be uh, replaced probably quite often. But anyway, these are the parts that I'm going to end up blasting. I'm not going to be able to do that one, so I'm probably just going to end up using my larger blaster to do that one outside. But all these other parts can easily be blasted. All the suspension components here can be blasted no problem. And that is exactly what I plan to do. And then we're going to paint it. So let's take a quick look and do, uh, do one, right? So the way that this works is actually pretty simple. You plug the... <laughs> Jeez. It's brand new, too. You plug the air into the air. Now you have your air going in. You have your media inside of here. Let's show you that. I have black oxide media in this for now, but I might end up upgrading and do walnut shells when I do my brake calipers. And then all you do is just turn the vacuum on, and then you get in. Clean enough, ready for some pour 15. First, let me say, I don't know what the heck I'm doing. I got a walnut blaster here, 40 pounds of blast. I got some extra media, and I'm just gonna blast this E31 subframe. I've got a welding helmet because I know that it's gonna end up getting in my eyes and face, and it's glasses themselves just won't cut it. So I'm gonna see what I can do here with this, and uh, you can see how bad it is. I mean, it's a lot of rust, but let's just see what happens, right? I 
say, the walnut shells didn't do too bad. As you can probably tell, I had to uh, clean out my nozzle quite a bit. I think I just need to get a new nozzle. Uh, I ended up using fine walnut shells instead of coarse. I thought the fine might end, end up being able to handle it, but it appears that I just uh, need a better tip on the rubber grommet in there. It kept on clogging up. So anyway, I'm ready to paint this thing. This is good. I'm happy about this. So now it's time to do the trailing arms. Now I ran out of um, uh, my not since my nozzle was clogging up so much, I decided not to use it anymore, and I had to get a replacement nozzle, a better quality, high no high quality nozzle. But in terms of the trailing arms, um, the bushings are okay, and these are quite expensive, so I'm going to let them hang, and they're very easy to replace. So I'm just going to end up leaving them in here until they fail, and then when they do, I'll just replace them as needed. But I do want to clean this up so I can paint this up. I'm going to do both of them, so I'm just going to use a wire brush for that, and it should take me about 10 minutes to do both of them. No big deal. Let's do that now. So this is some hardware here that uh, these are basically rear subframe. This is rear subframe hardware and uh, the big washers that go underneath. I'm gonna basically sandblast all this stuff in the booth. Um, actually, I think that the booth is gonna work out really well for this. So let's just use this, take this as an example and just see what I can do. So with the smaller pieces of hardware, like all the nuts, all the, the nuts and washers and stuff, I'm just going to put them into here kind of like, it's gonna end up being like somewhat of a tumbler, right? And it's gonna um, just allow for, uh, just kind of shake it up, kind of shake it up in there. And then as, you, as you're blasting, you can just sift through it and it just cleans it all within a couple minutes, which is awesome. And then the larger ones, I'm just gonna have to do that separately. But these are really gross and need to be cleaned for sure. Not bad, I'm very, very happy with the results. Let's do the rest of it now, huh? Okay, so I had the old ball valve operating this thing last time I was doing the rear subframe. Today I've got what's called a dead man valve, which is basically always off, but then you press this trigger and it opens up the orifice and it just allows everything to go through and it prevents clogging. Every review of this that I've read said that it was a huge improvement from the ball valve version. So let's take a look and see what it does on these front struts. Well, just clogged up for the first time. Okay guys, you're gonna have to forgive me because honestly, it was still clogging and I think it's clogging um, because of the rust particles that I reused from the rear subframe and it's just getting all in there. So I just, I just have to clean it all out and get better uh, media. But in the meantime, I, I was able to get a little bit, I got a little bit cleaned up, right? Um, and then I just ended up using a wire brush to finish it off. But now I got just about all my parts here. No springs, not the springs. I got just about all my parts here. I sandblasted uh, some hardware. Um, all this stuff is all sandblasted and ready to be painted. Um, so I am super psyched about doing that. So let's, let's get ready and start painting now and get that started. Okay, I got them laid out and I am ready to undercoat, which is basically a black, it's called U-Pole undercoating. Uh, it's a hardener and a coating. It's kind of like a Pour 15. Um, and uh, it's used for off-road use and stuff like that. So I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna paint all these parts um, now that I've got everything basically cleaned and sandblasted. And I'm gonna end up doing this in, in, uh, in, in parts, right? Because I'm gonna do all this um, and then I'm gonna end up doing the underbelly of the E31 and then I'm gonna end up doing the axles. 
Um, and cleaning everything up at once, I can't do everything. I can't paint everything at once, so I'm just going to do it in pieces um, due to the, co- the time constraints that I have um, on the project. So um, let's go into a time lapse and just see how this thing looks and works uh, as I'm painting it. it up now. Took me long enough, huh? Everything has been painted and is drying, including the rear subframe. Very happy about how that turned out. Um, and then I actually started started painting this puppy, the wheel well in the front. I'm going to do the rear. I'm going to do the entire rear, in fact. Um, so that's all going to come in the front sub. The front subframe is all got to be done. The entire car is basically going to get undercoated um, after all, and any more additional rust repair is completed. But this is a good start. More on that later. Um, so as it stands right now, we got everything basically uh, painted. Uh, we have a couple more items to uh, to fix and um, update, including the gas tank, the springs. Um, and uh, yeah, let's let's take a look at the gas tank now. Overall, I'm very very happy with this. Good stuff. Uh, let's move on to the next thing. <laughs> 